Welcome you all. In this video, I will be dealing with centrifugation. Before studying the applications and methodology of centrifugation, first we will discuss what is the definition of centrifuge and what principle is involved in this centrifugation. So, a centrifuge it is a device for separating particles from a solution depending upon their size, shape, density, viscosity of the medium and rotor speed. Then we will move to the principle which is involved in the centrifugation. If you consider in a solution particles whose density is greater than that of the solvent, those particles will sink and form a sediment. But the particles which are having lighter density, those will float at the top. The greater the differences in density, the faster they move. If there is no differences in density, that condition is called as isopicnic condition where the particles study stay steadily. To take advantage of even tiny differences in density to separate various particles, the gravity can be replaced by more important powerful centrifugal force which is provided by a centrifuge. So this picture will show you about how the centrifuge machine looks. Here there are main two parts of centrifuge machine are more important. One is motor and another one is rotor. Motor helps in spinning of rotor and rotor is attached with centrifuge tubes. Here there are two centrifuge tubes are there. One tube shows before centrifugation how the solution looks and another tube shows you how the solution looks after centrifugation process. In the first test tube, there will be a particles, those are suspended randomly in the solution. But in the second test tube, you can observe the particles which are settled down at the bottom and the supernatant float at the top of the tube. So this shows that whatever the particles which are suspended in a solution they settle down are because of gravitational pull or centrifugal force they settle down depending upon their density and the supernatant will be free from these particles. Another picture that also will show you how the centrifuge machine looks. Then we will move to study which type of particles can be separated by using this centrifugation process. Cells can be separated, subcellular components can be separated like nucleus, nucleolus and endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi complex, ribosomes, those all subcellular components can be separated by using this centrifugation and proteins and nucleic acids are also separate by this method. What is the basis of separation? Separation mainly depends on size of the particle, shape of the particle and density. Next, we will move what type of methodology is involved in the centrifugation. In 
this centrifugation it utilizes density differences between the particles or macromolecules and the medium in which it is dispersed the dispersed systems are subjected to artificially induced gravitational fields the particles in the system settle down because of gravitational pull the speed of the rotor will increases when the spinning also increases and because of this the gravitational pull also will increase the speed of the centrifuge is expressed as rpm revolutions per minute now we will study what is the rate of sedimentation and on which it depends on the density of the particles it depends on rate of sedimentation and the size of the particles the viscosity of the medium and the gravitational pull these are the particles which can be depend on the rate of sedimentation there are three types of centrifuges namely desktop centrifuge ordinary centrifuge and ultra centrifuge now we will discuss these centrifuges in detail desktop centrifuge is fixed on the working table and is operated manually and it has a speed of 5000 rpm next we will move to ordinary centrifuge this ordinary centrifuge is low speed centrifuge and it has a speed of about 30000 rpm last one is ultra centrifuge it is very very important centrifuge machine which is used for high speed purpose and it has a speed of 60000 rpm and it works in a vacuum next we will move to what types of centrifugation are there there are actually different differential centrifugation and density gradient centrifugation first one we will discuss that is differential centrifugation in this case the particles are separated at different speeds at different time the separation of cellular components of liver cells of rat can be isolated by differential centrifugation in this case the liver cells of rat can be taken and those cells are homogenized by adding sucrose solution the homogenate which is obtained in this step is subjected to low speed of 700 gravity for 10 minutes the sediment which is obtained in this case is called as pellet 1 and it contains nuclei unbroken cells and large fragments of plasma membrane the same pellet along with that there will be a presence of solution that solution is called as supernatant 1 the supernatant 1 again it is subjected to a centrifuge at 10000 gravity for 20 minutes when it is centrifuged at high speed then the sediment will form and supernatant also will be formed then the sediment which is formed in the second step is called as pellet 2 or 
it is also called as mitochondrial fraction because this contains mitochondria lysosomes and peroxisomes at the same time the solution which is remained at the top of the test tube that is called as supernatant 2 and it is again subjected to the centrifugation at 1 lakh gravity for 1 hour. During this time, the sediment obtained it is called as pellet 3 or it is also called as microsome fraction. This microsome fraction constitutes ribosomes, Golgi complex, endoplasmic reticulum and etc. The solution remained is supernatant 3 and it is also known as cytosol. This cytosol contains proteins, nucleic acids, polysaccharides, lipids etc. The components which is obtained in the supernatant 3 are separated further by chromatography, dialysis and electro Forces. This is the picture that shows how actually the differential centrifugation occurs. So, in the first test tube, the cell homogeneity is present and there are different types of cells are dispersed in the solution. When it is subjected to low speed, then the particles which are having higher density those will settle at the bottom and the particles which are having lighter density those will be dispersed in the solution. Next test tube again the centrifugation was done and the particles which are lighter than the first test tube those particles will be settled down and further same the centrifugation speed is increased and at last there will be settled down of the ribosomes, viruses and large macro molecules. This also shows the flowchart of the differential centrifugation. Next, we will move to another type of centrifugation process that is density gradient centrifugation. Here, the components are separated on the basis of density gradient. In this, the concentration of homogenate is increased by adding increasing amount of sucrose. The higher the concentration of sucrose, greater the density of the solution. The materials which are collected at their equilibrium positions in bands, which are according to their isodensities in the gradient and each band is isolated separately. This method helps to separate materials of the same size with different densities. For example, we can separate rough endoplasmic reticulum from the smooth endoplasmic reticulum by using density gradient centrifugation and also one more example we can give that RNA can be separated from DNA. This is the picture that shows how the, according to the density gradient, how the particles they will separate which are having the iso densities with the different concentration of sucrose and they form each bands and in each band if you separate carefully and se separate particularly then in each band you will get different density particles. 
next is the more important ultra centrifuge it is a high speed vacuum type centrifuge it works in a vacuum chamber as i have already discussed in the previous slides it is it is high speed centrifuge and it has a speed of 60000 rpm when the rotor of ultra centrifuge spins in a vacuum chamber the temperature is not raised and the air friction is eliminated this helps the attainment of high speed with very less expenditure of energy in the modern cent ultra centrifuge the optical device will be there through which you can observe the sedimentation and also we can photograph that this is how the ultra centrifuge looks like it is the display where we can observe the results and we can take the print out of that results this is the picture which will give you the idea how the ultra centrifuge takes place next we will move to last part of this video that is applications of centrifuge centrifuge is used to further separation of subcellular components as i have already discussed in the previous slides and it is used for determination of molecular weights of protein separation of gases from the mixture purification of particles and isolation of enzymes purification of virus bacteria and purification of the rna and separation of rna dna hybrids and ribosomal subunits and separation of antibodies this all can be done by using centrifuge machine thank you for watching